Okay, so we start the lesson now and we're going to learn some words. Uh, I would like to interest the fourth classes with uh, words regarding uh, ecology. And so we will start the lesson by um, like uh, trying to catch up with some words like, for example, torrential rain. What does torrential rain mean? Anybody have any ideas? So, for example, torrential rain, what is going on here, could mean uh, that uh, mm, we have uh, a situation in which uh, it rains a lot, yes? It rains uh, very heavily, and so, um, like the torrent, uh, we there was this service uh, to download files, it was called BitTorrent, and you could just uh, download files, so maybe we could think about torrential rain as something uh, mm, like falling down very heavily, yes? What is falling? Falling, yes, of course, present continuous, falling, falling down very heavily. Okay, so the next word is black ice. Black ice, I think, in Polish is gołąż, and that means probably a very heavy ice also. So my man is looking out of the window, these are my pictures. So, um, we could have something like black ice, and then uh, maybe your car can get ruined, yes? If you have black ice, you have to be careful to hide your car. Hmm? Okay, so um, let's go down to another one. Does anybody know what lightning means? I think this is quite easy. Um, we can see the word light in here, yes, of course. Uh, it means uh, what you know, and so lightning is what comes down from the sky, yes? So, and you have to be very careful, yes, not to be, for example, under it. But if you are in your car, probably this will save your life, yes? Because uh, um, then the energy just dissipates from the lightning. Does anybody remember also another word to express uh, bolts? Bolts uh, uh, coming down from the sky. Bolts are, for example, bolts of lightning. It's the shape of the lightning, yes? This shape is a bolt. Um, does anybody know any other words? Mm, there's the word, of course, thunder, yes? If anybody is an ACDC fan, there's a song by ACDC, it's called Thunderstruck. Okay, so somebody has been struck by thunder. The difference between thunder and lightning is, uh, as the word says, so lightning, we can see the light, and thunder, we only hear the sound, yes? We only hear the sound, yes, of um, the, um, the phenomenon, yes? Phenomenon. When we write in English, things beginning with F, you know, we write them phenomenon like this, yes? Concerning... Um, things with weather. So, coming down to it, uh, mm, what is our next one uh, could be, for example, mm, something to do with a forecast, yes? So, what is this? The forecast. What does this word mean in English? Um, the forecast. The weather forecast. You know, this man, yes, in front of a big blackboard, in the morning, yes, and he's over here, and sometimes he's from the military or from the navy, and he's showing a lot of things on a big map, yes. Here there's Italy, for example, yes. Here there's, oh, I didn't, didn't draw it so correctly, the boot, yes, the Italy. Here we have France, here we have Spain, and he's showing us, so for example, in Spain it's going to rain, or in Italy there will be the sun, yes, and in France, uh, mm, it's, I don't know, what is going to be? It's going to be, for example, um, kind of mixed weather, a bit of rain, a bit of sun. So the weather forecast is somebody who is forecasting, so he's saying uh, what will happen in the future, yes? What will happen in the future? The verb happen, yes, when somebody something uh, is going to happen, yes? Okay, so... Um, let me just save this one. So the next word... 
What could it be? Mm. The next word uh, could be something to do with the cold, okay? So, um, does anybody know something cold? Of course you know, there's the cold. Yes, you can catch a cold in these times, you know, when your nose is sniffing, yes, and something like this. Somebody starts to sneeze, you catch a cold, yes? Um, or, for example, it can be bitterly cold. Yes, so bitterly. Does anybody remember what the word bitter means? Bitter is with some something is uh, goshke. It's when, uh, for example, you can have bitter chocolate. Yes, so somebody likes milk chocolate and somebody likes bitter chocolate. I prefer bitter chocolate, and they say that people who really know what they want like bitter chocolate, but. I will not start a discussion in this moment about who likes chocolate, milk chocolate, or who prefers bitter chocolate. I prefer bitter chocolate. 70% for me is the best chocolate. Okay, so coming back to the word bitter, if something is bitterly cold, it means, oh God, it's so cold that you don't want to go out. So mm, it's really like really cold, no? Like when you taste this chocolate, it's kind of bitter. It's uh, somebody prefers milk chocolate, so the bitter cold. Mm, I don't like bitter chocolate. It's bitterly cold. So this is another word. You might use it to describe a situation, um, a meeting uh, in which uh, you went out and it was bitterly cold and it was freezing. Boom! It was freezing. Okay. So please remember the word bitterly. Yes. Bitterly cold, and we have a next word which is called a downpour. Yes, so we, I'll write it down here the downpour. What does downpour mean? To pour. Anybody knows what pour means? If I pour a cup of tea, would you like a cup of tea? I can pour you, yes, some tea in your cup, right? I will make a beautiful. And I pour you the tea in the cup. So um, we can have anybody know the song? It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. So it's raining, it's pouring, the rain is coming down very heavily. Uh, so a downpour is when the rain just comes down from the clouds, you know, in a very like heavy fashion. Okay, so we have a downpour. Mm. I just changed the color of my stroke here. I will put a red and let's change the color of the template. Let's make it yellow. No, I don't see anything. So let's make it brown. Yeah, why not? It's funny. Okay, so mm, we have uh, the downpour. Anybody remember how you say something which comes into the sky? A bolt of uh, um, lightning. Yes. And we have also the thunder. Yes, ACDC song Thunderstruck. So we are trying to learn a few words connected to weather. So maybe we are talking about ecology. It's important to say how climate changes. Anybody remember what the word uh, climate means? Hmm? Uh, the climate, of course, you know, is uh, um, is like what kind of uh, temperature is in different regions of the earth or if it's uh, raining, if it's uh, pouring, if the old man is snoring. I mean, the climate is uh, mm, a phenomenon which is very important today because we have climate changes. Maybe in Italy it was uh, mm, extremely hot in the summer, now not so hot. In Poland, for example, uh, we had very harsh winters, yes? So, what does the word harsh mean? Oh, I have to think, I have to, I will change the color of this one. What does harsh mean? Anybody know? Some harsh winter. A harsh winter. It means a very hard winter, yes? Kind of a little connected to bitter, hard, yes? But a harsh winter. It's a very good word to know. 
that has a little difference, you see, between harsh and hard, uh, it's a very heavy winter, a harsh winter. And so I was talking about winters, climate changes, yes? So try to think a little bit if you know any words connected to climate changes. So maybe write down in your notebook, if you're listening to this lesson, anything which comes to your mind, comes to your mind, comes to your mind, yes? Connected with climate changes, connected with climate changes. So it might be, for example, um, something to do with temperature, yes? So we have also two temperatures in, uh, uh, who knows what kind of temperatures we have. We have a Fahrenheit temperature, and a Celsius temperature, yes? So, um, it depends where in the world we are, but uh, we use uh, Celsius degrees, and you have to make a conversion if you uh, would like to know things in Fahrenheit. It's two different ways of measuring, measuring, so you know what the verb to measure, measure, measuring temperature. Right, so um, at the end of uh, this film, I will just make a slideshow of uh, these uh, words we have um, listened to and uh, repeated. So um, I will just uh, save them on the way, so you can watch them in the end. And uh, maybe I will not lose time now to, to save them. You can always pause, yes, you can always pause on the film to to remember these words once again. So, I propose another set of words. Um, the set of words could be a drizzle. Anybody know what a drizzle is? We could make a game at the end, you know, with trying to think about all the words which, which started with D during the lesson, no? So now I just make a little uh, reminder. We had drizzle and downpour. Anybody remember what the pour means? What, um, what drawing we made with pour? To pour a cup of tea, yes? So the downpour was a very heavy rain. Two words with D connected to climate. Um, and uh, let's try at the end of this lesson to remember a few words uh, connected with D. So I will say the word D and you will try in your notebook to remember the words with D. Uh, so if I say B, what would you say? What was the word we were listening to and exercising? It was bitterly cold, no? So we will do this kind of uh, work at the end of the lesson. Another word with B was black ice. Yes, we start, we did this at the beginning of the lesson. It was this big kind of ice which comes down going. Okay, so another word could be baking hot. Yes, so I think this is an interesting word because everybody knows uh, the verb to bake, yes, so to bake a cake. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you bake a cake, no, uh, and it's baking hot, it means, uh, you know, the temperature in the oven, yes, is very high, yes. We can have 180 degrees centigrade if we want to cook a pizza, for example, or bake a pizza. I made an error. You, we bake a pizza. Uh, we cook something else. Um, and uh, so baking hot is, for example, the temperature you might, you might find, yes, you might find in Italy uh, during the summer. Anybody remember what the word during means? So try to write it down because we are trying to exercise our English in this way. Um, by repeating uh, words and uh, writing them down. So a good exercise for you would be to write down uh, some of these words uh, you hear whilst I'm uh, talking. Okay, so we said that a drizzle is like a soft rain. Yes, yeah? so I didn't describe this. So we have a downpour is a heavy rain. A drizzle, a drizzle, the same word goes drizzle, drizzle, yes, and uh, mm, it comes to mind something which is very light. Okay, so mm, what kind of words can we find here? We talked about, so 
we, we talked about the weather uh, forecast. I think another interesting uh, word could be a scattered shower. Yes, so we have this uh, word scattered shower. What does the, um, this word scattered uh, remind you? Do you know a verb shattered, for example? So to shatter means, uh, for example, the glass window, yes, it shattered. So it fell to pieces, yes, the glass broke and um, the glass shattered on the ground. So in all little, little pieces, you know, it broke like glass breaks, yes, it breaks into little pieces. Um, scattered is also similar, so we're talking about little pieces, but in this... Um, In this way, we're talking about a scattered shower. So everybody knows what shower means. I would use it to talk about a rain which uh, is uh, falling down here and there. It's not so heavy. It's not a downpour, but it's like uh, here and there, it's scattered, yes? It's a scattered shower, right? So I hope also you can remember this word. I think we will uh, change the color now. Oh, it became green. Oh my god, the shattered shower. Oh my god. Okay, uh, I, so these are words um, which are not so easy, I guess, but if you remember a few of them, it really gives uh, an idea uh, to the examinator um, what kind of vocabulary you're using. Of course, it's also useful in writing, so we are speaking now, but if you use uh, this word in the writing, it also will help. Um, and uh, let's go on to another set of words. So if I say at the end of the lesson the word S, you should write something like shattered or scattered, okay? So um, let's now try another word. The word humid. Yes, so it's very similar to the Italian umido. I'm sorry, when I remember a word in Italian, I will say it. In Italian, it's umido. It's the same, exactly. Um, and uh, it means when something is full of moisture. This is also maybe a useful word, moisture. It's when something is damp and it has a lot of water in it, no? So, for example, a sponge might be moist. A sponge is a, is a gompka, yes, we use it to wash ourselves. A sponge might be moist with water, yes, or damp. And humid, we would say it... Mm, you remember the most important word in ecology is the word environment. So please never forget this uh, word, yes. Environment, this is an N, this is an M. Environment. Uh, because it means Shrodovisko. So when we are talking about ecology, we are talking about environments. And uh, mm, there are different environments. So, for example, uh, the environment in Russia is different from the environment in uh, uh, Poland uh, and the environment in Italy. Uh, for example, in Sicily is completely different from the environment uh, in Finland, yes, so we have different environments on the globe. Yes, you know what the globe is. The globe is all our Earth, with all our countries, is the globe. Um, okay, I write the globe here. Globus, I think, for Polsku. So, globe is also something we can use. And uh, so, we have learned a lot of words. And it's also useful to try and remember some songs with some words. For example, the next set of words by F. Yes, I will write down the word frosty. Yes, what does frosty mean? Um, I think it could be the name of a product. Uh, like uh, frozen pierogies, yes? This is a bag of frozen pierogies here, and uh, we could call it frosty. So somebody who decided to sell frozen pierogi called them frosty. I like this. I would call my company frosty, for example, why not? Um, 
But the best way to remember Frosty is a song Frosty the Snowman. So I will write it down and you can check it out. Check it out. Check it out on uh, the internet. It's a funny song for children. Frosty the Snowman. Da, 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 da. And uh, you sing it uh, on Christmas. Frosty the Snowman. Uh, frost is also an interesting word because the frost is... Uh, um, what you can find on the grass in the morning, yes? So you have the grass, you wake up, and it's a chilly day, so we can also write the word chilly here. Anybody uh, know what the word chilly means? Mm, so chilly is also when it's kind of cold, yes? It's funny because everybody knows uh, the word chili, which is connected to something completely different, it's a very hot spice, chili, yes? So, why, you know, the spice is chili, it's very hot, but chili, written in another way, it means kind of cold. So, maybe this is also a way to learn these words. So, if we say F, Frosty the Snowman, C, chili, or somebody could also write uh, down next to it chili so something mm, like uh, hot yes okay so um, let's make a little pause here and uh, we will come back to it mm, later in a while okay guys we're back to our lesson and uh, we will try here to continue with uh, our words. So now we will try and uh, figure out some more words connected to ecology. So we saw some words linked to weather, weather forecast, and different kinds of rain. Rain can pour, and it can snow, we have a drizzle, so a light rain. It can be honey, sunny, I'm sorry, the temperature can rise. And we will see a set of uh, other words now. So, uh, other words connected to um, temperature and uh, climate change. What could they be? I mean, when we're talking about ecology and the environment, uh, it's not only about uh, temperature and climate change. We have something called global warming. Does anybody remember what global warming means? So... Probably all of you should uh, understand or connect with the word warm here. It means uh, when something is um, getting hotter. So global, it uh, connects with, of course, our globe, so the earth, yes. And uh, mm, it means that the temperatures are rising. So the temperatures on the earth are constantly rising, which creates a series of, of problems. So the temperature is rising continuously and uh, what happens? So what happens? The ice cap is melting. So in uh, the polar region of the earth we have an ice cap. So around here we have and under here we have it's all made of ice and the global warming creates the fact that this ice is melting. Yes, so we have something like the melting, ice cream can also melt, yes, so the melting of the ice cap. If the ice cap melts, the level of the seas will rise. And for example, I'm from Italy, so Venice one day could cease to exist, could stop to exist, because the level of the sea rises and rises and uh, Venice could be submerged in the future. So we have a series of problems connected to global warming and melting of the ice cap. So um, these are a few words who could, which could actually really be interesting for you to say during the examination in the Matuga if uh, you pick the card of ecology. No? So the rising, also this verb rising, um, the rising of temperature. It um, shows that you are using uh, a good vocabulary. Okay, so this is about 
uh, global warming, the rising of temperatures. Let's go on and uh, continue. So we also have a problem that if uh, all these things happen, um, we could lead to the extinction. What does it mean, the extinction? Or when animals are extinct, yes? So the problem of uh, pollution and uh, of uh, so uh, other um, global warming or other series of problems, what does pollution mean? Please remember it when something is polluted. Also, let's try to do some word changing here. Is when something is... Uh, mm, Toxic, uh, there is industrial waste, uh, yes, industrial production. So, um, when you have uh, the production of goods, yes, um, so the earth is becoming polluted, zanieczyszczenie, industrialne. These are words which are similar also in, in Polish. And we could lead to the extinction of animals. So, for example, I'll try to draw a kangaroo here, you know. Okay, so the kangaroo has a pouch, there's a little kangaroo in here, yes, also, and he has big legs, the kangaroo likes to jump with his legs, yes, so who knows if the kangaroos or the koalas, yes, there was a big problem in Australia recently, um, uh, there were some fires and uh, a lot of animals, a lot of wild animals died because of uh, the spreading, yes, so the spreading means there's a fire, no? And it spreads, it becomes another fire, and the fire becomes huge. So spreading become it means when something uh, spreads and uh, it covers a big area, no? It's spreading, the fire is spreading. Uh, I can also spread butter on my toast. So this little word, I can use it for fires, to spread, I can use it for a problem to spread, I can use it also mm, if I have my little piece of bread, you know, and I spread, I'll try to draw a knife here, I spread the butter on it. Who likes toast with butter? For sure a lot of you like it. In the morning with a good cup of coffee. So, uh, we have animals, they can uh, get extinct, no? So the, these were a few words which might interest you. If um, you happen to um, pick the card of ecology in Matuga, but we have to go on a little bit because um, there are other words which uh, could uh, be of use. Uh, let's try to put a color which resembles a little bit of danger. Um, so um, we will use the red color. So we had global warmings, we said something in, is extinct, you could try to use also the word endangered species, no? So we have the word endangered, we have the word danger here, which all of you know, and the species, no? It's like a kind of animal, no? Which uh, is not extinct, but maybe it will be extinct, yes, in a while. So the kangaroo is an endangered species, as we said. But an extinct species is a species which is no longer here. Uh, it's dead already. So, for example, there was a dinosaur, the mammoth. No? I'll draw a little mammoth here. It was an elephant. It was a very old elephant. It's extinct. It's not anymore there. Yes, the dinosaur is extinct. He was a big elephant and uh, he doesn't live with us anymore. He, he's dead. Yeah? Um, climate changes, uh, some people say meteors fell from the sky, there are different theses to why the dinosaurs died, um, or maybe it was a flu also, which killed the dinosaurs, but these are theories we, we do not actually know. So there are a lot of words connected to ecology, we could speak um, a long time about uh, this. I think that uh, we could also focus on Two words, uh, like mm, we have some natural disasters also. So the word disaster means uh, that nature, yes, is angry and uh, something is uh, happening. No? So we have, for example, tornadoes. Yes, tornadoes, for sure, you, you know, the words tornadoes, they can pick up also cars. A big tornado can pick up cars 
and uh, also the roofs of houses, no, if it happens. We have, also, of course, words like tsunami or earthquake, yes? So, you know what earthquake means? Earthquake means when the earth, yes, trembles, yes? So the earth, for example, in Japan, there's a lot of earthquakes and uh, people build their houses of paper because and of wood because they know another earthquake might come so they could lose their house yes uh, so earthquake what could it be think about a few other natural disasters tsunami but one word which uh, is difficult to remember is the word flood yes flood it reminds me of another word blood but it has nothing to do with it blood of course tokref and flood to is um, is what happened in Wrocław, for example, a Powódź. Uh, so the river flows out uh, and uh, starts to flood uh, the city. So the water runs through all the houses and it's a dangerous thing. So it's connected to water, the flood. So try to remember the word flood, earthquake, yes? So if it happens to talk about natural disaster, okay? Natural disaster right so um, these are our other words uh, and uh, um, i would like you to try to understand these uh, things uh, so i think i have finished with words only uh, maybe a few just to remember does somebody remember what fog means and uh, does somebody remember what ban means? So maybe we are talking about an issue in which we should ban um, a certain behavior of people. So or we could ban something else. So um, actually try to... So people shouldn't behave like this. So they get a ban on something. Um, the fog. Anybody knows what fog means? And uh, the last... Uh, Mm, word because we had a lot of words today mm, of course it's important to learn uh, words specific words and maybe if you learn 30 or 40 specific words but also less uh, uh, you will start to be sure uh, in the language in a, in, a, uh, in a specific topic for example ecology we have seen but there's also technical knowledge so computer mouse or you have different, uh, um, actually, categories no? of, of this knowledge. Okay, so um, I think with words we are done. So I would uh, stop it with the words. So I think uh, that uh, we will finish this lesson about ecology. I hope that you will be able to speak of the problems around us. There's a lot of problems connected to ecology today. Um, and we have to be aware, no? We have to be aware of these problems. So, we have to know them. We should limit the amount of plastic we use. And uh, because we are thinking, uh, we have to think about our future, no? We have to think about how the next generations, yes? How the next generations will cope with the problems we are creating, yes? So cope means to try to find it out in the dictionary what cope means, to cope, the verb to cope. I'll make a little V here for the verb. And we must be aware, try to also find it on the dictionary. And uh, so this is enough uh, for the words. I think uh, if you know these words, you should feel uh, quite... Uh, sh better in the, in the in the use of your English. Right, so um, I would finish it off for today now uh, regarding words and uh, um, maybe we should continue with uh, um, making a little research on uh, what problem is uh, is happening in the world now. So try to find the problem and try to speak about it using these words. So I thank you for now.